Those of you watching who are in amateur theatre groups, get ready as all of our tea is about to be spilled. Hey guys, I'm Random here, welcome back to my channel, where today, as you can see from the title, we're going to be talking about the truths about being in amateur theatre groups. Personally for me, it's the truths about being in youth amateur theatre groups, because I'm only 17 so I haven't been in any adult ones yet, but, you know, I'm getting there. So recently I've had some pretty bad experiences with amateur theatre groups, so I feel very qualified to talk, to talk about this topic mainly because I'm just very salty. <laughs> so without me rambling on about how salty I am, let's just get right into these truths because they are very brutal and a lot of you guys out there are probably gonna be relating to this entire video. <laughs> so number one, favoritism. Now, whichever amateur theater group you're in, whether, whether it's new or existing, it's been around for ages, or whether it's literally only just come up, then there will be favoritism in the cast, okay? It, it's unavoidable, it just, it just happens. If there's people who know the directors or just anyone involved, nine times out of 10, they're gonna be more likely to get the main roles. It's just the way it is. It's annoying, it shouldn't happen, but it's just the way it is. So if you know, if you're going into an amateur theater group and you know any of the people who were involved, you have all the luck in the world at getting a main role, so you know, just walk into the audition and do your best because you know that you're gonna be getting a main role. Nine times out of ten. It's, it's just the way it is. It, yep. <laughs> now, if you don't know anybody in involved in the group or in the show, then that leads me on quite nicely to number two, which is the fact that you will be constantly in a cycle of being in the ensemble, which will annoy you more than anything else ever will. Trust me. I am one of these people. There are so many shows that I've been in where I've just ended up being in the ensemble because I haven't been subject to the favouritism because uh, I didn't know anybody involved beforehand which is just very very irritating <laughs> especially if it's like a really big show that you have a really big dream role in and you know you're not gonna even gonna get a chance to be that role because you know as soon as you walk into that audition the show has probably already been pre-cast before the auditions even started it's just kind of a waste of time <laughs> now number three is something that i have experienced personally and i'm still suffering the consequences of if you're in the ensemble, so if you're not a subject to the favouritism that we literally just talked about, and you can belt, you know you can belt, like honestly you know you can belt, but a lot of people in the ensemble can't, and your director is shouting at you to sing louder, this is just from personal experience, do not think because you can belt that you can belt more to help everyone else out. Do not do that, it will strain your voice, trust me, I should know, it's happened to me almost every week for the past two years. <laughs> the past two years I've been in this amateur theatre group that... I I'm a soprano that can bell, okay? It's a weird combination, I know, just, it's the thing. <laughs> but I was in the ensemble, I was in the cycle of being in the ensemble, and... I knew that I was one of the only people that had a strong bell because the director kept yelling at us to sing louder, and we were trying our best. Like, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people around me who could bell, like, it's... Yeah, but I knew that I could belt, so I, in my little head I thought, well, I will help everyone else out if I just sing louder, if I belt more, and help everyone else out to get the director to stop yelling at us. That meant for almost every week for two years, I was straining my voice. That on top of shows, and I, uh, I'm still suffering the consequences. <laughs> so, quick tip, do not do that your voice will suffer the consequences and it will last for a very long time. But I'm only just kind of just getting over it, but it's still suffering the con still suffering the consequences. It's still not its best. I would never do it again. So, yeah. You think you're helping people when really you're just doing harm to yourself. So just do not do it. If by some miracle you get a solo in a song, count it as a blessing because that means you have been singled out even past all this favoritism you have been singled out as someone who deserves a solo that is a blessing that is a miracle treasure it okay treasure it also when you do that solo make sure you give it your all because who knows that your director might yeah they might do the favoritism thing but you know they might have 
you in the back of their mind because you did so well on that solo. So it might help you out in getting a role in the next show, you never know. But just, I mean, obviously give it 100% whatever you do in the show anyway. But if you get a solo, count it as a blessing, do your best. It might help you out in the long run. Just trust me on this one. Now, if you're coming to the end of your current show and the group announces the next show that they're gonna do and you don't like it, do not feel guilty about dropping out of that show, okay? Do not feel guilty. They, even if you send them like an email, like, I'm sorry, um, I can't do the show, like make up some sort of excuse, they will probably email you back being like, we'll be sad to miss you, you know, you'll be missing a vital part of the group. Oh. Don't take that with a pinch of salt, okay? Because they are saying that to be polite most of the time, and this is gonna sound really horrible, okay? This is gonna be really, really blunt. They will not miss you because, like we've mentioned before, the show is a precast before the auditions anyway. So, you know, they're, they're basically just missing an ensemble member, and there's probably a lot of people who are gonna go through with the show, and there might be new people coming in for that particular show, so, you know, the cycle of favoritism is just gonna go back around again. You're fine. You're not gonna be missed that much. If you don't like the show, you don't have to do it. Do not feel obligated because you have some sort of commitment to that group. You don't, okay? And if you genuinely do have, like, another show that you know you want to go do, like, say, you know some people in another amateur group that you know you're gonna get into the cycle of favoritism with, I don't know, but just... If you feel like that group would be better for you, or there's another show that you'd rather do, go off and do that. If you don't like the show that your current group's doing, don't feel obligated to do it. Do whatever you want, don't feel guilty, okay? No guilt involved in any of this. Now this next point is most relevant if you're in like a youth theatre group and there's a lot of little kids, like say the age group is like 7 to 18 and you've got a lot of little kids. Expect at some point to want to kill every single one of them, at least strangle them, because let me tell you, they will be tired, they will not want to cooperate, and they will forget choreography more than anyone else in the cast, which is going to infuriate a director or a choreographer, whoever's doing whatever, and it will also infuriate everyone else because you keep having to go about doing numbers, but uh, I mean, let's be honest, everyone forgets choreography from week to week, but. You know, it's it's just gonna be the most stressful time ever. I mean, it's great to have little kids in a cast because it's like, yeah, get kids into theatre, you know, I understand that. And it is great, you know, I'm not bashing every single kid out there because we've had some really great, great kids in the groups that I've been in. But there's always gonna be those few or that group of kids who just wants to be there for the ride and doesn't want to put any effort in, doesn't want to make the show better by being in it, you know, you know what I mean? It, it's it's just going to infuriate you. So yeah, little kids can be great, but can also be very, very, very stressful. Now this next one is a sort of take it however you really want to, but at some point if you've had like a really bad rehearsal, um, like people have forgotten a lot of like comedies or choreography, it's just been very stressful, just not very productive, your director or whoever does this kind of stuff is probably going to have a, if this was a professional production, if you were in the industry, rant about how you'd be fired if you did this, that, or the other. And I know a lot of people out there do want to do this professionally, that's why they start out with amateur. Uh, personally, I don't want to do any industry stuff, you know, I want to stick to my graphic design, don't want to do industry, I don't want to go into musical theatre, um, don't want to do that. I <laughs> just want to keep it as a hobby, because I enjoy it, I really love it as a hobby, but I don't want to do it as a career, you know, there's probably a lot of people out there that are like me. And if you are like me, then you're probably just going to be sat there just enjoying the fact that whoever's doing this rant is actually ranting. Um, and it's just like, yeah, this is completely irrelevant to me because I don't want to do this. So, you know, it might relate to some people, but currently I'm just not really listening to what you're saying. <laughs> it's just completely irrelevant to me, you know, I mean, it's fun uh, to just sit there and maybe go through the show in your head, um, but just kind of sit there and, and just enjoy it because it's funny just to sit there and be like, this doesn't apply to me in the slightest. So there we were, there were some truths about being in amateur theatre groups. Uh, I've only really touched on the negatives in this video, but amateur theatre is great. You know, the performing arts, it's amazing. It's a great place to make new friends, and if you wanna 
go into this, if you want to go into the industry like do professionally, then starting out with amateur is very, very good for getting experience. And it's just really, really fun to just be in shows, you know? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more of my videos. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, Nathan, which will be, as always, at the end of this video. And if I miss any out, make sure to leave them in the comments, you know, let's just have this great big discussion about our experiences. Let's just spill the tea, be salty, I don't care. I'm very salty myself at the moment, so, you know, it, it's fine, you know, I'm not gonna judge anybody. Let's just release it all in the comments, you know? <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.